Hey, hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. Well, that was a fiasco. We got to leave at a good time. We just now stopped at a hotel room. Uh, actually, got to stop at a decent hour. Um, that was a fiasco. I, I put, we hooked my wife's truck up and and put, the, the truck we're hauling is, a, is an Avalanche, Chevy Avalanche. And it's loaded with all our friends' stuff. It's the one we drove the U-Haul for. She had a motor put in her truck. We loaded that thing up and it was... The, the trailer was so squat down, and it's a full-size 16-foot dovetail flat trailer. It was so squat down that it was almost scraping the ground in the back. So I was like, well, that's not going to work. So I put the Avalanche on front and put my wife's truck on the trailer. Well, the Avalanche has so much stuff in it, and all the suspension is bad. So it's squatting so down so far, I had to leave her truck on the back of the trailer. Well, then it, it would wobble when you take it down the road because I was testing it to see which one was going to be the best bet. Then I put my full-size Silverado on the trailer and put our friend's avalanche on top of the trailer to haul it, and it scraped the road coming out of our driveway, and we don't have a steep driveway. So we were like, we're just going to have to drive it. And so we filled it up with gas, and we've been driving. We're all the way out in Fort Stockton now. So uh, it was better to drive it. I'm I'm, I am so glad we did not decide to push it. We found out after the fact that her truck by itself empty weighs 7,000 pounds. And with all the stuff she has in it, we were over 8,000 pounds. That exceeded my trailer weight capacity of 7,500 pounds and my wife's truck's towing capacity of 7,700 pounds. So we were like, and a lot of people, this is going to be complete Greek to them, but there's no way this was going to happen. This is, we were going to, we were just asking for disaster. So I was like, we'll just drive it. Well, I'm glad we did because we got here to Fort Stockton and there's a, there's a dust storm blowing up, so the wind's blowing like crazy, and it has been the whole day. So it's been eventful. But once we got going, it was smooth. Everything's been running, running good. And, <coughs> and Marge gets a shakedown on her truck since we're driving it to see whether it's going to hold up. And so far it is. So anyway, here we're back on the road again. What is he doing? Staring at himself. In the oh, is he looking at the mirror yeah, like he does at home? We have the little tiny, the new puppy with us. He doesn't know what to think about this. <clears throat> All right, anyway, let's get to our devotion tonight. And we're going to be reading out of Luke eleven four. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil or the evil one. You going to come over here and read the Bible with me? Huh? Huh? So you guys know what this is. This is the Lord's Prayer. And forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let's go up and start. Verse 1, the Lord's Prayer. Now it came to pass, as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples, John being John the Baptist. So he said to them, when you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. It's very important. A lot of people just read this like they do in the movies, you know. It's just, it's for filler. A lot of pastors will do this. But this is a template for prayer. Jesus gave us this for us to pay very close attention to. And I've, I've talked about this before and shared in the video how the prayers that I do, mainly the morning prayer, the, the, the prayer of glory for the Lord, is structured in a way to mirror this in greater or lesser detail. What? What are you doing? You starting to come out of your shell now? Huh? What? Don't try to look cute. You aren't that cute. No, you're not. That look you're not. You're not that cute. You're playing with the dog and then you do it. Okay, I'm busy. Let me finish what I'm doing. Now I'll play with you later. Go away. Go get hurt. Okay, sorry. <laughs> And this is a template he gave us, a template. So that's how you know it's real life because of what just happened. We're very real here in our family. So this is a template he gave us for prayer. And I try to structure that morning prayer and even a little bit of when I do a prayer in the evening, structure it similarly to be within these guidelines. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to make it exactly that way. But when you go through it and then you listen to the morning prayer, you can see where the aspects of that all fall into place there. And that's by design. He gave us this. This isn't the prayer you pray. 
when a lot of people have that idea, this is the prayer you, you pray. This is just a template. The, the prayer should be very personal between you and the Lord because it is your direct communication to the Holy Spirit to him. So he said to them, when you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, giving glory to God, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread. Providence. And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And he said to them, Which of you shall have a friend? And go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three, three loaves. For a friend of mine has come to me on his journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, Do not trouble me. The door is shut now. The door is now shut. And my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. I say to you, Though he will not rise and give to him, because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. Notice what he's saying here. Yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. Not just three, but as many. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find a knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. I don't know what that was. If the son, if a son asks for bread from any of among you, will you give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will you give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will you offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your heavenly Father? How much more will your heavenly Father? Give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. Very interesting. So what he's telling us to do is he gives us a template for prayer and he tells us pray often. Be persistent in prayer. And this is mentioned other places in the Bible. Be persistent in prayer. Be diligent. And he's saying if, if you give good when somebody asks you, the, the Father, our Father will give us the same thing. He will give us good too. And we're the evil ones. We're the bad ones. He's goodness because he, he's the Father of good. He's pure goodness. How much more will he give us the good asking for these things? So when you have a petition, bring it to him. When you have a question, bring it to him. When you have a request, bring it to him. If you're having problems understanding the Bible, start your Bible reading in prayer. Father, I'm about to read your holy word. I ask that you show me what it means, what your meaning is, not mine, not the world's, your meaning, so that I may understand properly and that when I share it, I can share the proper understanding. That's a, a good motivation for why you would read the Bible. I want to know what the truth is so that when I share it, I don't share it incorrectly. So I don't dishonor your word and dishonor you, but it said honor and bring glory to your name. And he will give it to you. I know he will because he did it for me. I don't know this stuff. I'm not smart. I'm not, I'm not educated in these things. I'm no theologian. But I am confident enough in the Holy Spirit that I will have no problem. <laughs> he heard somebody. I would have, I have no problem going toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody, even if I don't know what I'm talking about. I want to see what the Scripture says, and I want to hear what other people have to say. And even if it's somebody who is heavily learned in these things, I would more than happy to sit down with them and talk to them, even if I don't know what I'm talking about. It's not because I know anything or because I desire to have any kind of debate with anybody. It's because the Holy Spirit brings those things up, and we should, as Bereans, as children of God, be that way towards those things. Want to learn. And if we ask the Father, he will teach us. He will give us whatever we need. What we are taught to seek or shun in prayer, we should equally pursue or avoid in action. Our actions must, must match what we speak. In fact, that was funny because I was thinking about this today. Very earnestly, therefore, should we avoid temptation, seeking to walk so guardedly in the path of obedience that we may never tempt the devil to tempt us. You know, what's a, what's a great way to get bit by a dog? Stick your hand in this fence. We are not to enter the thicket in search of the lion. That's, a, a, that's Hunter's theology. 
a hunter knows that if you shoot an animal and they bolt and they run into a, a tightly packed area of vegetation, you do not go in after them because that's their territory and they will get you. Especially if you're hunting hogs or even a lion or a predator of any kind, you do not follow them into their den and you don't follow them into the bushes because they will get you. We do, are not to enter the thicket in search of the lion. Dearly might we pay for such presumption. This lion may cross our path or leap upon us from the thicket, which they will. That's why they went there, because they're going to pull an ambush on you. But we have nothing to do with hunting them. He that meeteth with him, even though he winneth the day, will find it a stern struggle. Let the Christian pray that he may be spared at the encounter. We don't even want to have to deal with it in the first place. Our Savior, who had experienced of what temptation meant, thus earnestly admonished his disciples, pray that ye enter not into temptation. But let us do as we will. We shall be tempted. Hence the prayer, deliver us from evil. Because it's going to happen. God had one son without sin. But he has no son without temptation. Because even Jesus was tempted as we are. The natural man is born to trouble as the sparks fly upward. And the Christian man is born to temptation just as certainly. We must be always on our watch against Satan. Because, like a thief, he gives no intimation of his approach. You, you're not going to see him coming. That's why the false doctors are so subtle. It's really easy to be persuaded. You must be diligent. Believers who have had experience of the ways of Satan know that there are certain seasons when he will most probably make an attack. This is why I wish uh, Jesse, Diamond Justification, would keep doing videos because he was in that world and knows exactly how that stuff plays out. He can better school anybody on what to watch for. Just as at certain seasons, bleak winds may be expected. Thus the Christian is put on a double guard by fear of danger. And the danger is averted by preparing to meet it. How do we prepare? Prayer. Prevention is better than cure. It is better to be so well armed that the devil will not attack you than to endure the perils of the fight. And there's a lot of people today that are Christians that look for the fight. And that's dumb. Even though you come off a conqueror, Pray this evening first that you may not be tempted, and next that if temptation be permitted, if Satan seeks to sift you as wheat, you may be delivered from the evil one. Not taken out of this world, but strengthened through the trial, because we grow from those things. Now, the Lord, and we've talked about this even just recently, the Lord will deliver us from many of those things. He will keep us from many of those things, and we don't even know what happens. Things happen, and we don't fully understand why they happen the way they do. And there's things that happen that we don't know about. There's a reason why we couldn't haul that truck on the trailer. And I know it. There was just no way it was going to happen. And I saw right away, you know what? We're asking for disaster. Let's just drive the vehicle. And the vehicle has run perfectly. We have no issues. But there's a reason why. The wind has been horrible. If we'd have been trying to do all that with that, all that weight on that trailer, there's, there's no telling what could have happened. The wind would knock us off the road. So it was better for us to do it this way. But see, there, most of the time, we get in our vehicle and start our car and go out about our day and don't even know some of the perils that are out there that we might get caught up in. That the Lord saves us from. We can't even recount back to him all the times he thinks about us. He's sitting there. He's sitting there staring, at, staring at the mirror. Yeah. Yep. Both of them. So even though we don't know what the devil is going to do, we don't know what temptation may come, and, and they're everywhere, they're all over the place. This is why we structure our prayer as the way the Lord has put it. And when we talk to the Lord and we ask him, Lord, I, I know temptation is coming. Don't let me fall to it. But if it is a time of testing, if this is a trial I must endure, strengthen me to endure and come out on the other side victorious, glorifying you. Because they're going to come. We don't get to see, in a lot of cases, what the result was going to be because he protects us from that. I told you guys before, you know, there's been times... 
this happens or that happens. And it's like, oh, I can't believe I had this flat tire. And then we find out later if I hadn't had the flat tire, we would, we would have ended up in the middle of a ma massive car wreck. Or why do we get snowed in up here in Flagstaff, Arizona? There, that was crazy. And come to find out there was a bunch of wrecks along the highway we were going to be driving down at that time. Everything happens for a reason. The Lord, nothing escapes his gaze. Nothing surprises him. He structures these things to happen this way on purpose. And you know, once you start to realize that, you start to see it and you start to realize, ah, okay, I'm not going to fight this. I know people that in the situation we had this morning, I know people that would have fought the issue and they would have pushed it. You know, if I'd have popped a tire on that trailer because I had it overloaded. First of all, I don't have a jack that, that's strong enough to pick that thing up with all that weight on there. I mean, that's over 8,000 pounds, over 9,000 with the weight of the trailer. I don't have a jack strong enough to pick that up. The biggest jack I have is a 10 ton. I'd probably do it, but why would I want to put myself through that? Because then I got to change the tire. And what if I pop a second one? Well, now I got to stop at a tire shop and have tires replaced. That's just added expense and more problems. And then in order to do that, i got to unload the vehicle to do that. Then put the vehicle back on and strap it back down. See, the, the Lord knows even if we don't. He already sees how this is going to play out, even if I don't. And this goes with everyday life. All the things we do every day, at home, out in the stores, in our jobs. And so when we pray, we pray in a way that is going to, number one, bring glory to God. Number two acknowledge him in his majesty and number three ask him for the things we need every day to make it to the end of the day this is we need this every single day and even if it's just a few words in passing even if it's, if it's just you know you only have a moment lord please help me through this situation i don't know what to do and i don't want to mess up and i don't want to fail and i don't want to dishonor you and you go on about your day he hears that and he knows so the prayer that Jesus gave, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil or the evil one. That whole prayer, that's your template on how to structure it. Give glory to God. Ask him for his providence. He says, I'll take care of you. I'll provide for you. Jesus said it over and over again. Every hair on your head is numbered. He knows. If he knows you that specifically and that intimately, he's definitely watching out for you. And if we need to understand more, if we need to know more, he will give that to us if we diligently ask him. So when it comes to salvation of others, will he answer our prayer if we diligently ask him? Yes. The Bible says he will. Let us believe him and continue in that. If you don't understand fully what I'm talking about, go back to Luke 11, 4 and read through that prayer and think about that template of prayer that Jesus gave. And then read the following verses and think about what he's telling you. Meditate on it. Contemplate it. What is he telling us to do? And he's giving us an example of how the Father is towards us because the example was how we are towards our kids. Everything in this life is a shadow of everything we have with the Father. Once you start to see the comparisons, once you see everything in the law and everything in the Old Testament, how that's all shadows of the things to come, you start to grasp how some of this might work. And it makes it so much easier to deal with everyday life and to not be stressed out, to not fear, to not doubt. Take it to the Lord every time. No hesitation. He will deliver us. All we got to do is trust him and believe him and believe in him and trust in him and he will deliver us. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus name. Don't be afraid to ask. If there's something that you've been afraid to ask, take it to the Lord. Even if you feel like it's something that you don't want to trouble him with, he is greater than the sum of all his creation. If that's the case, then there is nothing you can take to him that he can't or isn't able to handle. And he desires to do that for us. He desires to help us. We're his kids. Of course he desires. How are you with your kids? He's that way with us too. Only to a much greater degree. I'll see you guys in the next video.